We're going to take a look at average value and mean value theorem for integrals. So I'm going to go ahead and title the tab. I forgot to put first fundamental theorem on that tab. So second fundamental theorem um, on the one we just did previously. And average value and mean value theorem. So I'm going to go under one tab. That's because I did done it on the same page. All right, so go ahead and write down the title. Average value of a function and mean value theorem for integrals. All right, so when it comes to average value of a function, that's also known, or we can say it as, the average height in the closed interval a, b. We can say the average height in the closed interval a, b. All right, so if you go ahead and draw a curve, Right, draw a curve with a closed interval a and b. All right, the average value of the function is all those points right there on the y and taking the average of those. So it's finding the averages of those. That's also known as the average height, right? So we can find the average height of this function. Well, to explain this, let me try something a little bit simpler first and then we'll come back to this. So let's say we had another graph, and on this graph we had a closed interval, but we had a rectangle. And the closed interval, we had a rectangle and a closed interval, A, B. Well, if I told you to find the average height of that, that's easy because the average height is constant, right? How do you go about finding um, the area of this uh, rectangle, of the shaded region? Well, you know that area is base times height. times the height of it, or the average height of it. What is the height? If I told you to solve this equation for the height, what would you do? So you would take the formula and then you divide everything by b in order to get the average height by itself, right? So the average height, you can look at it as the area divided by b, which stands for the base. Actually, I'm going to write out base because I don't want you to get confused with the end of that interval b. So we can just say it's the area divided by base. Okay, so if you look back at the curve, right, if I was to try to find the average height or the average value, depending on what the book asks for, it's the same thing. Average height or average value of the function would be the area divided by the base because I'm going to show you in a second that I can make that um, curve, any curve, into a rectangle. But what's the area underneath the curve? Well, we know that's the integral from the interval a through b of whatever the function is. Let's call this f of x f of x with respect to dx, divided by the base. Well, what's the base? How do I get the base? What's well, that interval there? All I have to do is do the b, b minus a, and that will give me how wide it is, or the width. So b minus a would be the base. Well, this is your formula to find the average height or the average value of a function. And again, more than memorizing it, you need to really understand it so that you can easily get it. If I solve for the integral part of it, I'll get a same kind of thing, but just a formula written in a different way. The integral of the area under the curve is the average height, or the average value, times the base, which is b minus a. Alright, so the curve can be made into a rectangle, like I just said a little bit earlier. So that's what we're going to do. I have like a little piece of string. So imagine that the curve, and I'm just going to draw the curve again. I'm going to be, I'm going to try and get it exactly to look like the curve above. If you can't get it exactly, that's fine, but you know, at least try. Imagine that that curve was a piece of string, like the one... I'm holding right now. If the curve was a piece of string and you could move the string alone to make it straight as opposed to curve, so I'm going to measure a string the same distance as the curve, which is, that's pretty close because my string is an easy string, but whatever. All right, now I make it straight so that I can make it into a rectangle. And I put it on the graph, and you see I joined the two intervals, I can make it into a rectangle. So it's the same line, I've just made it straight. Now you'll notice that that curve has lost the area um, on the left hand side, on this shaded area, it's lost that area. But it has gained, because it didn't have it before, the area that I'm about to shade on the right hand side. It didn't have that area um, above the curve but below the line of the rectangle. And you can see that both of these areas are equivalent. So even though it lost some, it gained some. So it ends up balancing. So basically we can make any curve into a rectangle. And this is going to actually bring us to our, our theorem, our mean value theorem. So, 
call that middle part where it actually does this C, a point C. So the mean value theorem of integration, this is a listening check, put a box around the word or, put a box around the word or. If f of x is continuous on the closed interval a, b, then at some point c in that interval a, b, at some point, that point c, right, the area underneath the curve, the area underneath the curve is equal to the average height, which in this case is when you plug c into the function, so let's call that f of c. The average height, which is when you plug C in, so F of C, times the base. So again, if I had a rectangle, that would be what C is. So the area is height, which is when you plug C in, that's going to give you F of C, times the base, which is B minus A. So that's what mean value theorem says. It says that it is at some point see where the area underneath the curve is equal to the average value or the average height times the base. Now things to remember, remember f of c is a y value, it's not an x value. And then the c inside the function is the x value, so you need to know that because those will be the questions. Right? f of c is a y value and c is an x value. Let's take a look at an example. Find the average value of f of x which is equal to 4 minus x squared on the closed interval 0 to 3 and find x or c, depending on what the book is using, um, using the mean value theorem for integration. This is a listening check where it says, find the average value, color in average value only. Color in average value. All right, so let me not assume that you remember the, the formula, because once again, let's just go off the, the thing you don't remember the formula. So you have to be able to be able to um, derive it or to bring it. So it's really important that you understand how it's coming about. So remember, you have a rectangle in the interval A and B. To find the area of a rectangle is what? Area is base times height. Solve for the height to find the average height, right? So divide both sides by um, B. You're going to get the average value, the average height is the area over the base. Well, we can rewrite that in terms of a curve the area of a curve is going to be the integral um, of a to b of the function with respect to dx over the base which is just b minus a. So you need to know that. So let's write down the formula for average value which is also known as average height in general basically. And then now we're going to plug it in on what it means for this function. So the integral goes from a to b. What's the interval here? It's from 0 to 3. The function is 4 minus x squared with respect to dx, and then b minus a is 3 minus 0. So then we're going to simplify that to, or integrate that, I'm sorry, to 4x minus x cubed over 3. And we want to go from 0, evaluate that from 0 to 3, all over 3 minus 0, which is 3. Alright, so that's going to give us, I'm going to take that third outside. Yeah, I'm going to take that third outside so it doesn't confuse us. And then now we're going to plug in 3. So we're going to get 12 minus 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3, that's going to be 9. Minus, and then plug in 0, 0 minus 0 equals, and now we're just going to, that's 12 minus 9 is 3, and that's 0, so it's 1 third times 3, which is equal to 1. Remember, that's a what value? That is a y value. The average value of a function of the average height is a y value, so that's our y value. So I found my average value, which is 1. Now I need to find my x, or you know what c actually is, as opposed to what it is inside the function. So basically my x value, using the mean value theorem. All right, so all you got to do is actually just algebra. You're just going to plug in your y value into the equation you have, and you'll get your x. So plug in your average value for f of x to find c. The listening check, color in what we're writing. All right, so what's my function again? My function is 4 minus x squared. And do I see f of x or y? I'm just going to plug in 1. So my y value is 1. So 1 equals 4 minus x squared. All right, solve. So take x to the x squared to the other side. It becomes positive. Take 1 to the other side. It's going to be x squared equals 3. Square root both sides. You're going to get x is plus or minus radical 3. So that's going to be my x value. So very important for you to know the difference between your x and your y value. 
Okay, we're going to color code these two formulas that we just learned because we learned two things on this page, the average value of a function and a mean value theorem. So I'm going to color code that. So this is actually a listening check. Go ahead and color code it, same color. So color in the title average value of a function and then go ahead and color in the formula to find the average value of a function, the same color. Draw an arrow going down. Now you're going to do the same thing with the mean value theorem. Right, different color and then put a like a little thing around it and color it in just so we can color coordinate what goes with what and that's pretty much it so that's how you find the average value of a function and what the mean value theorem for integration integrals is so let's practice now I know.